What about my wrinkles? Yeah, what about... You don't have none. That's yeah. very kind. That's the right answer. Other me. You, well, yeah, the burp took away the joy of that a bit. Sorry. One of the best things about baking, I think, is it gets us away from homeschooling and work. It's a nice way to take a little bit of a break. Don't yeah. you agree? Yeah. Just a little bit of time out in the kitchen to make something that's also lovely to eat. I don't think that we need to be too complicated separating eggs. I think you can do really straightforward cakes and get a really good result. It's nearly Valentine's Day and actually Mother's Day will be coming up soon. So this is a great one for that sort of an occasion. Butter in the bowl. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add some golden caster sugar to that and whisk it up. But before I turn the whisk on, I've got a job for you. Here I've got some cardamom pods. We need 10 of them. Now you don't seem to find cardamom ever ground, so you need to do it yourself. So 10 pods into there. I remember we used to put cardamom in hot chocolate. Cardamom is oh. lovely in hot chocolate. Pop out the seeds into the bowl. I want you to grind it as smoothly as you can. And while Cassia does that, I'm just going to cream together the butter and the sugar until it's really nice and fluffy. So we're going to crack the eggs in. You crack and I'll whisk one at a time until they're all nicely incorporated. Okay. And if you fancy making this cake, the recipe is in the description below. And what you'll find is it's quite likely to curdle. You see it's splitting a little bit. Oh yeah. That almost always happens when you do this sort of a cake and it always comes together really well, so don't I've worry. Got one, my one egg left. Last egg to go. So next to go in, we have got some ground almonds. And uh, almonds in a cake give a really nice texture. I love almonds in a cake. I haven't had many almond cakes before. Well, you know sometimes we make a polenta cake oh, yeah. that has almonds in as well. Okay. And it gives it a texture and it makes it kind of moist. <laughs> Lovely. We're also going to add some flaked almonds. That's going to add texture to it as well. Do we add the whole bag? No, we need about 50 grams, which is about uh, maybe a couple of handfuls. Okay. Probably a good idea to weigh them out. Can I do that? Yeah, you do a big handful as well. It's quite a classic combination, almonds and cherries. And you can make them with other things. You could use strawberries or raisins. Next, a little bit of orange zest and juice. How are you at grating? Um, I'm all right. You probably need about half of that orange. If you've got a half normal- Half of it? Yeah, Look just- how big it is. I think, I think you might need me to do that job. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. So you I'm just- not strong enough. You've got, it's true, actually. You've got to hold it really firmly. And then you sort of want to roll the orange along the grater. Now what we need is the juice of this orange. We need one tablespoon now and then we're going to make a syrup to put on the cake once it's cooled because you want it to be a little bit, not sticky, but certainly not dry, to be sort of quite nice and moist. So if I just halve it, now do you want to just carry on squeezing that half and this half into this jug. Okay. You carry on with that job. I've got some dried cherries here and I've just snipped them because they're quite large. Um, you could use dried strawberries or raisins, maybe even a bit of candied peel. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of this flour. May I just have that spoon, Cassia? Mm -hmm. Thank you. About a spoonful will probably do it. Onto them and just rub the fruit in the flour. And do you know why we do that? Yeah. It sort of, it coats the cherries in the flour and that should help prevent them from sinking. I think they probably will sink because they're still quite large even though we've snipped them. So they're just heavier than the cake mixture. So as the cake rises, the dried fruit, it really tends to sink in a cake like this. But we're not going to worry about it. We'll just see what happens. But putting a little bit of flour on it can prevent that from happening. Well, it can certainly help prevent that from happening. So the rest of the flour goes in. Some salt. Finally, I can't stop sniffing it. <laughs> oh, the lovely ground cardamom. And we'll just give that a good mix together. So here's our tin. Okay, and we're going to put the cake mixture in and then we shall decorate it. What we're going to do, I'm just smoothing it a little bit over the surface. We're going to decorate it with the rest of those cherries. Okay. Because it's nearly Valentine's Day, we should do a Valentine's heart. Oh, that would be nice. I think we should put them on now. And if the worst comes to the worst and the cherries sink a bit, put some more on the top. Okay. Right? Double cherry. Now, yes. almonds around the outside. We're going to bake it for about an hour and we'll keep an eye on it. And if it gets too dark, probably at about 45 minutes, we can just cover it loosely with foil. 
What a pretty cake we've got here. It's very pretty. I think it's really lovely. I'm very pleased with it. And it smells wonderful. Now we're going to finish off our cake with a little bit of syrup. Do you remember the orange juice that you squeezed? Oh yeah. That made about 75 mils, about five tablespoons. A little bit of sugar into the pan. So let's pour it over the cake. Ready? It's just going to soak in. And it's going to give more moisture and a little bit of orangey flavour. Oh, it's going to be a nice cake. Ooh. That looks nice. Now, what we're going to do is, it's a big cake for us, and what I tend to do is leave a cake out. Usually, I just put a dome over the top, and we'll eat it for a couple of days. After that, I tend to slice it and freeze it. We've also got a couple of neighbours who live alone, so I always make sure when we make a cake or we make flapjacks or anything like that, that we take her and Cliff a couple of pieces each. Do you think that you should have the first slice? Yes. I think you should as well. I think you should have the first slice. And cakes freeze really, really well. And I think freezing it already sliced makes it much more easy to take a piece out when you need it. Yeah, they have sunk a little bit, haven't they? Well, they've sunk quite a bit. But never mind. Maybe chop your cherries a little bit smaller than we chopped ours. What do you think? Really Is it good? I can taste some cardamom. Cardamom. Can you? Cardamom. Maybe don't talk with your mouthful. So I'm going to bag up a couple of slices. And then if it ever stops raining, we can go and share them with our neighbours. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll enjoy this.